Hi, I'm an aspiring woodcarver and a werewolf. Wait, I think they're after me. That's better, they're not gonna find me here. So, nice to meet you, I live in Wales, we have lovely sheep here and amazing nature. And I wanted to show you what I do during the day, how I do my carvings, and of course have a chat in between. I'm going to start with carving something out of cherry wood. I was thinking of a rabbit or a hare, we'll see what we're gonna get. By the way, you might ask, why do I always wear gloves? Well, that's a secret. Anyway, this piece of cherry has been through a lot. This is where I tried to see how the urbanizing solution works on this wood and it has some saw marks, but it would be a crime not to use it. Usually with this size of wood you can make a nice piece of jewelry and this is what I usually carve, some pendants, jewelry and so on. I usually start with sketching on paper just to see how my idea would look like in real life. So it's going to be a sort of standing hair. Then I need to find a way to fit it on my piece of wood. I usually just do it by eye. This time I got quite lucky and there seems to be enough space for my drawing. Then I use a pen to make the lines more permanent. This is a liner pen. Then I use a bandsaw to cut as close to the lines as possible. Before I would do it just by knife or maybe with a coping saw. Now it's time to carve. I add some definition to my hair, making it a bit 3D, making sure that the head is above the body. This way the hair won't look as flat. The weather is really nice today, so I continue carving outside for some time. Time to have a break. I think we deserved a nice cup of tea and a walk. Come with me, I'm going to take you to a secret place. So, I've been thinking, when can you consider yourself a woodcarver? Is it when other people call you that? Is it when you make a living out of your woodcarvings and you can actually pay your bills with it? Or is it when your work is in a gallery? Or maybe when you do something quite often? And I think it's that, it's the latter. It's when something becomes an integral part of your life, so without it you wouldn't be complete, like something would be missing. And what do you think? This is one of my first wood carvings. It looks kind of haunted. I think even when your skill is quite low, you can still express yourself in wood rather eloquently. It's such a great medium for that. Just a few touches of a knife and you have a character. Okay, while I'm outside, I'm going to do some sketching. I try to do it from time to time to sketch from life, just everything that I see around me. You don't have to be amazing at it, it's just all about learning to see shapes and then to transfer them to a piece of paper. So I've taken my sketchbook with me and I also have a micron pen and I'm going to sketch something, maybe that flower, maybe some other herbs. I'm going to continue carving my rabbit as well here while I'm outside. It's a really nice day, the birds are singing, just amazing. You know what's a real pain is when you buy a nice piece of wood, you really like it, you make something cool out of it and you think to yourself, I need to get another one of those. 
No, you'll probably never get anything exactly like it again. Well, unless you buy it from the same person again and from the same tree. Like this piece of cherry, I love it. I made some of my most favorite things with it. Then I got another piece of cherry and it has completely different qualities. It's like you need to take every new wood blank on a date all over again to get to know them, to see what they're like, which is exciting and keeps you on your toes and makes you appreciate the fact that every tree is unique and different and that even things like when the tree was cut also contribute to the final result. But sometimes you still long for that particular piece of wood that you were working with some time ago. Anyway, today I'm again on the road of discovery. I received some wood by post and I thought that I would unbox it and try it out with you for the first time. The first one is actually another piece of cherry. So I'm very excited to see what it's like. It's probably going to be a bit different from anything that I tried before. Look at this beauty. And I was right, it's unlike anything I carved before, so this piece is going to have its own unique qualities. Okay, the next parcel, these are going to be some exotic wood blanks, which I'm very excited to see. Smells really nice. Okay, so this blank is Iroko. I think I bought it just because of the name. I don't know anything about it. And this one is Miranti. Uh, on a first glance, Miranti seems to be kind of soft. So it looks like it would be very easy to carve, but we'll see. Iroko is probably slightly harder and it even feels heavier. Yeah. So now I'm going to get out of my room and just try and see what they're like and just carve them a little bit. Iroko seems to be quite easy to carve and it leaves a very nice and smooth finish. Lovely wood. This is cherry. He carves well, especially if your knife is extra sharp. Now Miranti is immensely soft. You can carve it very quickly and easily, although I'm not sure yet what kind of projects it is good for. I try to make an eye. And although it can hold details, they're not very visible. And here is the finished hair. I placed it on the rope and it's ready to wear. Okay, so it's time for some Q&A. So I asked you to ask me some questions on Instagram. And if you missed that, then don't worry, because I'm going to do some more Q&As later in the future. I'm going to butcher your usernames, I'm pretty sure. So bear with me and just don't get offended. So Scott Sweet 13 is asking any beginner tips for wood finishing. So if you carve something like that, so some little pendants out of hardwood, yes, you would need to use some oil. I use normally walnut oil or raw linseed oil. You can use boiled as well. I like using food safe finishing just, just in case. What if somebody decides to lick it? I don't want anything to happen to them. But at the same time, if you don't mind using non-food safe finishing, you can use this Howard Feed and Wax and you can even make your own finish. So this one, I made it myself. Uh, this is beeswax, just very natural, normal beeswax mixed with some raw linseed oil. So I just heat them up and made this paste. And I will link um, a person who published a recipe how to make this one on Instagram. And so you can see that for yourself. It's from Rachel Bainton. She is a spoon carver from UK. So both Hollett Matthew and Zach Foster 20 are asking what's my favorite thing to whistle or to carve. And so the answer is whatever I'm about to carve next. So something new is probably the answer because I like even surprising myself you never know what's gonna come out and whether anything is gonna come out at all um, but having said that I do have a favorite thing to whittle it's like a comfort whittle it's like when you want to just relax and calm down then I take a piece of basswood and I carve these little little guys 
Next one, KMAX7LI is asking, how many years do you craft now? So I would say about three to four years and on and off. There were months when I wouldn't carve anything because I thought it was something not very serious and that's instead I need to do some real adult things. Well, I don't think that anymore and so whenever I have some free time I always carve and I think it's just you shouldn't deny yourself this pleasure. Next one, Nuttles is asking, have you had any bad accidents in wood carving? So the worst accidents I had were when I was cutting some vegetables, not wood, but of course I did have lots of cuts in the past and even now, like just yesterday, I think I had two small cuts. It's, it's normal, it happens. Nothing bad because I try to use like very controlled movements. So even if the knife slips, it's, it's not gonna go deep. It's just gonna be a very surface cut. And of course your non-dominant hand is always gonna suffer because it's always easy just to slip and then go right in the palm. So I try to avoid that. I, as I said, I just try to control my movements. So another question from Löffel Suze is, do you actually live on a farm or are all those animals just close by? I don't live on a farm, I live in a house, but I do have some animals. I have a chinchilla, I have a very naughty dog called Artie, and I have six hens that live in my garden. But not very far from me, I also have some neighbors, a lovely donkey and a few goats, and sometimes I visit them and I treat them with some carrots. Roshana Hakimi is asking, do you live in a village? Yes, I do live in a village in Wales, and there is practically nothing here, not even a single shop, but the nature is really nice and I can see some mountains also on the horizon, so I guess it's worth it. Whittled Wonders is asking, how did you get into whittling? So I always wanted to do something traditional, something that brings me back to my roots, something that maybe our ancestors did. Because I'm sure that everyone's ancestor at some point would pick up a piece of wood and just try and carve it. So this is what I wanted to do, something traditional and raw and natural. And of course it's really nice to do something with your hands, I think it's just an amazing meditation as well. As to how it happened, it was literally just trial and error. I would take some wood, some construction wood, and of course it was really bad, and a very dull pen knife. And my first carvings were obviously didn't look like much but then I simply kept going and I'm still going. LBEAZ2020 is asking what are your chickens names? So another question by the same person is, what's your favorite type of art to do? Whittling, painting, writing poetry, etc. So for me, it's probably drawing on wood and then trying to carve it. I like to unite these two types of art. It's like at first you're doing it 2D and then you try to turn it into a 3D carving. And I think it's really cool. And the last question by Serwalk75 is where or how do you get your inspiration? So over the years I learned not to wait for the inspiration. So if I don't know what to carve, although that never really happens, I open Pinterest and I browse photos of some animals and see if I like any of them. But it's basically just carving what you like. So if you like some animals, and there are just endless possibilities there for carving. So you can do that. Or maybe something from history, if you like Vikings, then you can carve some maybe Viking runes or say an ax and a shield. So, or maybe something from a film, like a logo from Star Wars. So there is always something to carve. And this is everything. Thank you for spending a day with me and I will see you later.